first on Fox Business, former Under Secretary of State for Economic Growth and Energy and the Environment is Bob Hormatz. What do you think, Bob? Um, putting the video aside for a moment, we know that Huawei and the concern about it is something that is a piece of a very large pie that we're not sure we're ready to swallow yet with China. Well, I think the direction of the talks so far across the board on intellectual property, on trade secrets, on cyber issues, seems to be very positive. Uh, from all we're hearing, uh, Larry Kudlow just made a very interesting statement about progress along a wide range of fronts. And also Kevin Hassett, the, the chairman of the CEA, mm -hmm. made a very positive statement that he had actually seen a document with the, the lines that are positive from an American point of view. But it has to be a compromise. The Chinese are just not going to make uh, total concessions to the United States. It's not going to be a one-way agreement. They want to get something out of it, too. And, of course, one of the things they want is to have the tariffs not only not go up, but to have them be eliminated and to have some greater degree of access to the American market without these major new restrictions on their investment here. President so they, Trump. It needs to be both ways. But President Trump, uh, through Bob Lighthizer, announced, okay, the, the hike of the 10% tariffs to 25%, which was supposed to happen at midnight last night, we're putting that aside. I mean, that's a concession. In good faith, I believe President Trump has made some very major moves to show the Chinese he's actually serious about this. And I'm just wondering, when the Chinese are presented with a 150-page detailed agreement, what are they going to say? You were in China recently. What are you hearing on the ground about the people who have Xi's ear? Well, it's hard to say. As you say, it's 150 pages, and therefore there'll be parts of it that they'll like and probably parts that they don't like. I think the president has actually been uh, flexible, demonstrated flexibility by Very. extending the deadline and also by indicating that he would like to meet with President Xi perhaps sometime in March or maybe even later. Well, Xi has and, uh, yeah. uh, crossed out about 10 days of his calendar, and we think it may be to go to Mar-a-Lago for a signing. I think that's highly possible, and I, and I think that if, if there had not been real progress, I don't think the president or pres our president or President Xi would have indicated that they're, they're going to have a meeting. And it seems to be it's not set in stone, but it's at least possible. If you think, if we believe that the U.S. wanted to hold back China's global domination and prowess, will we have been successful? Or can you really do that to another country? Well, really, that's a really interesting question. There are two different things. One, the U.S. and China are going to be um, both major technology powers and 21st century technologies. They are already, and that is going to continue. So there's a technology race mm. internally, and there's a technology race to compete for sales in other markets. So that is on. And the, tech, the Chinese are really moving ahead, not just with technology that comes from other countries. They're developing their own innovation at a very rapid rate. So they are going to be a technology power one way or another. There aren't many companies that can get the 5G infrastructure up and running, Cisco being the one here in the United States. There are a lot of uh, satellite companies, too, but Huawei is a giant as well. The Europeans are getting in on this. They are supposed to hold a very important EU meeting regarding Huawei equipment and 5G. I know that Germany's Angela Merkel has said, we've extracted a promise from China that the Huawei uh, equipment that we already have installed, because, you know, some of it's already there. It's hard to put that genie back in the bottle and, and extricate it somehow. But um, do you think that the Europeans should be trusting? Well, I think the Europeans, I, I don't know what arrangements they've worked out, so it's very hard to say. But other countries, Germany and others, have also said similar things. Mm -hmm. I just think that to your question about where we are in the technology race, the U.S. for 70 years has assumed that we're the supreme power in all the modern technologies of our era. Mm -hmm. And now, as you correctly point out, we're seeing competition. We're seeing it from China. We're seeing it from other countries as well. So the question is, what are the ground rules? Other countries are going to be very competitive in China in, in AI and in quantum computing and autonomous vehicles and, and many of the things of that, of that sort. And this is going to continue because they're, they're investing in new engineers, scientists, mathematicians, new labs, new mm -hmm. R&D. We have to now figure out, A, what the ground rules are for this new 21st century competition. That's the great challenge. The Chinese have an interest, too, in creating some degree of stability of expectations in these 
international areas. There are no rules for many of these things, and the rules are being written not just bilaterally between our two countries, but other countries have to be included also. Robert Hormatz, great to see you. Thank you very Thanks much for me, Liz. with the Kissinger Institute now. Thank you.